Hey guys, Aaron here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to show you how to check your fuel trims on your Porsche. Specifically, well, I guess it could be on any car, but specifically mine is a 2006 Porsche Cayman S. It's my track car. It's smoking. I'm having some issues, so I want to check the fuel trims, see what's going on. I want to point out I am not a fuel trim expert. I just learned everything I'm about to share with you two days ago when talking to my buddy Skip, who is the inventor and manufacturer of the Ultimate AOS. So he was kind enough to help step me through some of this stuff enough, hopefully, that I can make a video that helps some people. Anything that you guys want to add or correct, please do so in the comments below. All right, so this is assuming that you guys have access to either PWIS or a Durametric, or you have a friend that has either one. I jotted some notes down on the board that I'm gonna go over with you guys, and yeah, that's pretty much my entire understanding of the process. But I uh, just wanna go over what values we're gonna try to look at in the car so that we can understand possibly what they mean. All right, well, let's start off with what is fuel trim? And you know what? I just Googled it. And it is the adjustment that the engine computer makes to the fuel mixture to maintain a balanced air fuel ratio. So that's why my videos are so informative because I don't know any of this stuff and I have to look it up. Now there are two types of fuel trims. One is the long range fuel trim. Sometimes I guess people call it LTFT and a short-term fuel trim, STFT. And what these things are is uh, kind of as the name implies, but uh, I'll try to explain it to you. I'll start with short-term. So you start your car, it's the first time you have started it since all of your codes have been cleared, a brand new fresh computer, and you start, uh, start idling, and your computer is paying attention to the smoothness that your engine is running and this fuel trim here is your engine deciding whether or not you need a little more gas a little less gas to have a nice smooth running engine and that continually happens it continually monitors and adjusts the fuel trim as we'll see by the numbers in just a minute and uh, it just yeah keeps adjusting those so what is the long-term fuel trim then? So if your computer notices that it continually needs to add or remove more fuel consistently, uh, and this number is not at zero, where it, or one, actually, I think this number is supposed to be at one. Anyway, if it's not uh, where it should be, it sets this thing. So this is like kind of a saved in memory setting. So let's say your fuel trim has been at like two for a long time. So it's gonna set this thing at two to tell it, hey, the next time I start up, just start at two because we know that it's off. And then this short-term fuel trim will continually uh, adjust itself but it won't have to adjust all the way up to two because that's already taken care of. I hope that makes some kind of sense. Again, we'll see that later. Now, when you clear your codes, like I'm gonna clear my code later, I have a code right now, it's gonna erase this long-term fuel trim and it's gonna to have to learn it over again. So the memory will be gone. We'll start with our short term and uh, we'll see what that does. So like a lot of times, if your long-term fuel trim is way off, and you start your car and it's really, really rough for a while and then it kind of settles in, um, what it's doing is your short term is saying, hey, this long term is off, we need to change it. So it changes the long term and then your short term keeps going. So anyway, whether or not that makes sense, I hope it does. So we have different values that we can look up on the PWIS. One of them is the RCAT, or I guess it's also called the TRA for some cars or applications or whatever. There's another one called FRAU or FRAO, which I have not actually found yet on the PWIS. So if you guys know how to find that, or maybe we'll find it today, let me know. So these are for two different ranges. The RCAT is for when you are close to idle, and this one is range two, so like when you are on the accelerator, I'm assuming. 
Um, the range one value that we'll see, it is a percentage and it should be close to zero. So if it goes any higher than plus or minus 10, bad, something's going on for sure. If you have a positive number, that means that it is adding fuel because of possibly a vacuum leak, or I don't know, maybe there are other reasons that it does that, but that's the, that's the one I know about. If it is a negative number, that means that it's taking away fuel, and that can happen if you have a leaking injector that is, you know, adding more fuel than it's, it knows about, so it needs to take away what it's spraying in, or if your fuel pressure is too high. Um, so yeah, those are some of the causes, and I also read that a faulty mass airflow sensor is usually uh, going to affect the RCAT ranges. So if you got crazy RCATs, that might point to a faulty mass airflow sensor. So that might come into play on my car later. Now for the range one, all or range two, sorry, all I know about these is that it says it should be close to one, but I don't see those anywhere. Now the fuel trim mean value, uh, I think is the value that we're actually gonna see in the PWIS, and that's the one that we're gonna see moving when the car runs. Now when the car is not running, there's gonna be no value because it's not doing anything. When the car is not running, we should have a saved RCAT value. Now the very first time I looked at my car, uh, the RCAT was zero, so it obviously didn't have one saved. I started the car, did some more monitoring, turned the car off, turned it on, and then it started saving an RCAT value for me. I uh, don't know why that happened. I don't know if it was just the PWIS wasn't reading it the first time or what, but we'll see what happens this time. All right, sorry for that big brain dump. I hope some of that made sense. Let's see the PWIS. If you don't know anything about diagnostic automotive tools, that's the OBD2 port down there. And I plugged this in. The other end is gonna be a USB hooked up to my computer. Um, I have a whole video on how to find, install, set up a PWIS, put a link here and in the description. All right, the first thing I wanna do when this thing fires up is I'm gonna select the DME and I'm gonna check the fault memory to see what our uh, fault code is right now. Okay, so I have a P2196 and a P2198. The O2 sensor signal stuck rich on the both the bank one and bank two sensors. All right, so before deleting these, I'm just gonna go to my actual values right here. And we are still on the DME. Uh, and mine are, if I remember correctly, under the mixture formation. Let's click on next. Yes, all right. So uh, this fuel trim mean value, bank one and bank two, are the short-term fuel trims that we just talked about for bank one and bank two. And the fuel trim adaptation close to idle is the RCAT values that we were just talking about. B1 for bank one, B2 for bank two. So yeah, each bank is monitored and adjusted separately. And yeah, adaptation is a very good word for it because it's gonna adapt this value over time and be used like we mentioned. So if I just select all four of those and I click next down here, it is gonna pull those up for me. Okay, so this kind of confirms what I thought before. So my RCAT values are zero, and I believe that's because I have a fault code. And I guess when my car gets a fault code, it does that. Um, so yes, and our fuel trim is, uh, in our fuel trim mean value, the short term is not moving because my car is not running. All right, so what I can do next to show you guys some of these values is I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the car. And we're gonna open the garage so we don't die. All right, let's fire it up to the house. It's got 
went home from work recently, so uh, no smoke. I didn't expect there to be any, but we are seeing the check engine light here. And when I start up the car, I always have to uh, click next again here for it to reconnect. Go to the DME and actual values. No vowel, I always skip the vowel. Go to our mixture formation, get our fuel trims and our RCATs. Okay, so you can see that my RCATs have not been set because this has not been running enough. But the fuel trim values are pretty bad. Uh, as a test, what we did last time, and I can go ahead and do it again now, I guess is uh, since I already have a code, I opened the, uh, well, I'll show you. Just went ahead and opened the oil cap. You can hear it gurgling around in there. And uh, that introduces a big vacuum leak into our system. Let me show you what the values do. So yeah, the values get pegged out at 1.25. So that's all the adjustment that the computer can do. So, bank one value still is at 1.25. If we let it sit here for a while, it will probably drop back down some. But uh, yeah, so that is your fuel trim and how to read it. So, let me go back to my fault memory. I'm gonna reset these codes. I'm going to delete them. Yes. I don't know if you heard that, but the idle of my car just changed as soon as I did that. Go back to my actual values. And you can see that my RCATs are now being adjusted. And my fuel trim means should start dropping back closer to one as my RCATs adjust the adaptation. Previously, when I did this, uh, both of my RCATs were just over 2%, but under 3%, and the uh, fuel trim means dropped to around these ranges. And I just did this two days ago, so my uh, RCAT for bank one is a lot higher than it was before. So that's probably why I got the check engine light on. All right, now if I turn off my car and I turn it back on, I would expect these RCAT values to still be stored here. These values will stop changing and just go back to 1.000 or whatever it was at. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go try that real quick. So our fuel trim values just froze and everything froze here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, restart. All right, so this time in it said it couldn't detect what kind of car I have. So I might have to disconnect and reconnect the PU is, but I'm just curious now that we have different uh, numbers and stuff here. Oh, here's our fuel fuel trim. Oh, look, now we have F-R-A-O and F-R-A-U. So I guess that's because the Boxster doesn't have these ranges, but some other vehicles do. Okay, so that's good to know that they are here as well. I'm just gonna select them all just in case it tells me something. And here's my RCAT values. Yeah, okay, it can't read any of these values right now because it's not really connected to the car, I guess. Let me disconnect and reconnect the Pewiz. Now that it knows I'm a Cayman, we're back to our familiar values. Fuel trim and RCAT. All right, so just as expected, our RCAT values uh, are stored in here and our fuel trim is reset. So next time I start it up, 
it's going to know that it needs 3.797% more fuel to be mixed to run smoothly for bank one and 3% for bank two. Um, so this leads me to question whether or not I have a dirty or bad or going bad mass airflow sensor. Lucky for me, I have one on order and it arrives tomorrow. So I will be able to plug that thing in uh, and come back and check these values and we'll see if that makes any difference. All right, guys, good news is I now have a video on how to change the mass airflow sensor on a Cayman 987.1. So you can check out this uh, link up here and watch that. Bad news, it did not help with my smoke or my RCAT value. So I'm going to continue searching for the answer. Uh, keep following along the channel. Please subscribe to the video thumbs up if it was helpful or informative or, you know, just do it for me, please. I, I appreciate it. Thanks. And I'll see you guys on the next video.